appreciative of all the men of the church. Thank God. I really appreciate Brother Quentin told me there's 19 signed up for men's conference. We're looking for 25 to go, so just got six more to go. And um, we're, we're so, so blessed. Thank God. Exodus chapter 14 and verse number 21. Exodus chapter 14, Sister June, and verse number 21. Thank God. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all the night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a, way, a wall upon unto them on their right hand and on their left hand. Thank God. They were not to stay in the water. They were to pass through the Red Sea. And then Isaiah chapter 43 and verse number 2 says, And when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou uh, walkest in the midst of the fire, they shall not, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flames kindle upon thee. So I want to preach tonight from this thought. Some waters are made to just go through. Some waters are made to just go through, to pass through. So God bless you. Let's just pray. Lord, I pray you do something very special tonight. Help the word of the Lord. Help every individual that walked in here. We ask it to be done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I bless you. you Maybe seated while we give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And <clears throat> Thank you today. <clears throat> praise God. The word... Our uh, water's found over 336 times, um, 363 times in the King James Version of the Bible. And water is, is used in so many different ways in the Scriptures by God. Like the time that he made the bitter water sweet. And then there was the time when he shut up heaven for three and a half years and turned water into wine. And when that, uh, the blind man was sent to have uh, his eyes washed with water so that he could see and of course, Naaman was sent to be to dip in water seven times for his cleansing. And the Holy Ghost is described like a well of living water springing up in us. And so uh, through waters of baptism in the name of Jesus, we have our sins remitted. And so water has a great significance all through the scripture. But when you think about it, most of the waters were meant to go through. They weren't meant to just stay there. Matter of fact, um, you can just, um, you know, drown if you just stay in the water. You can waterlog in the water. So they were meant to pass through, as was um, every situation that God has. Was, uh, there was a victory on the other side of the Red Sea. There was a victory as they passed through the Jordan River. And what the waters had to, that they went came to had to be passed through. And so there are places in life that all you can do is to go through it. He's got Psalms 84 and 5 says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in the Lord and whose heart are, in, are the ways of them, whom passing through the valley of Becca, who passing through the valley of sorrow, who passing through the valley of weeping, makes it a well. And the rains also fill the pools. They go from strength to strength, even from uh, every one of them in Zion's appears uh, before the God. And so there is a place where that when you're going through your rough places in life, that you can actually turn it into a well and you can begin to actually go from strength to strength and from victory to victory and from blessing to blessing. Being a child of God does not keep you from having to uh, problems and having to pass through some things and having some trials and tests. But what you have to understand is that when God God brings you into a situation, it's his will for you to go through that situation. And so our message must be victory in spite of our trials, victory even in our difficulties. Even when we are defeated, we have to move past that and just go on to the next battle and know that uh, I want to continue in the things of God that will give me victories in my life. And so uh, victory is not dependent upon our ability as much as it is dependent upon his power. And so I don't want to be looking at my ability, but I want to be looking at his strength and his power that God is not looking for you know, a sacrifice. What God is looking for is somebody that will be obedient to him. I don't uh, want to live without 
um, lines and borders and, and perimeters in my life. You know, it's kind of like trying to climb or go up a mountain. When there are guardrails along the side of the road, it gives you a, a confidence. You kind of feel uh, protected because there's a guardrail there. I've driven up Mount uh, Pikes Peak. I don't think we quite made it to the top. I think we got within a quarter mile. The car got hot. But I can remember uh, they don't have guardrails on going up Pikes Peak. And so, you know, I wasn't seeing how close I could get to the edge. I said how close I can get to the wall, you know. But if you got a guardrail there, it kind of relaxes you, and you can kind of drive with that relaxation. And so many times we need to understand that uh, the church standards and the things that uh, we are taught to be obedient to are really our guardrails because as long as I stay within the perimeters of the guidelines of the Spirit and, and what the, the Spirit would have me to do, I can have that protection of just knowing that I'm in a safe place and I'm being given safe direction and I have a, a guardrail that can help me there. And so we need to understand that, um, you know, there is safety in the Father's house. There's something about getting submitted to the Father's house and getting submitted to the will of God and getting submitted to the work of God, getting submitted to the church. It has some protection in it. The prodigal son didn't realize how many benefits he had by living in his father's house. When the prodigal went to a far country, he found out that when his money was all gone, he was in a far country, and in a stranger's house, he became a slave and he became a, a servant. When he remembered that if I was back at my daddy's house, everybody had provision, everything was taken care of, and so I am going to stay in my father's house because there's something about having perimeters that, that help me to stay safe and help me to stay in a safe place. And one thing you have to remember as a child of God, it's not going to always be smooth sailing. It's not going to always be easy going. Even Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness in 40 days and 40 nights. He was tempted of the devil and he showed us how to overcome the devil by the word of the Lord. And that was a beautiful thing that we have today. I know where I can go when I'm struggling with things in my life. I can go to the word of God and it can give me strength and help me to overcome. But when it was over, the Bible says that he returned in the power of the spirit. There's something about going through some things in your life. You don't wonder, well, why am I having to go through this? Because God wants to give you power. And the way you get power is you go through some things. God can see you in your dark moments. He can see you in your, your dark times. Jesus, you know, it was night when he was in Gethsemane. He was arrested in the night. And he uh, was started, his trial was started in the night. But in spite of that, what was fixing to happen is the light of the world was fixing to start shining as it never had shown before. And so no matter how black the night, there can still always be uh, the light of victory that he has for you. So don't worry about uh, the wilderness. God will see you through the wilderness. His, and faith in God is better than the answers. Sometimes we're praying for answers. But I'm telling you, if you've got faith in God, the devil doesn't have any weapon for faith. If you're just saying, hey, it don't matter how bad it is. It gets. It doesn't matter how rough it gets. I'm going to keep living for God. The devil don't have any answer for that. Praise God. The only way the devil can get to you is when you get discouraged and you get depressed and you begin to doubt the, the hand of God. But as long as you can keep your faith fixed on him, no matter how rough and no matter how bad it is, thank God, you don't have to worry about victory because victory is going to come. I know we live in a day of unparalleled pressures. There's pressure everywhere we go. There's pressure on the job. There's pressures in the home. There's pressures concerning our children. There's pressures about our health. I mean, everywhere there is pressure. And we need to bring all of those pressures to the house of God. But I don't want you to expect to get it fixed in a 30-second a prayer either. But I want you to know that there's no better place to bring all the pressures and stresses of life in the house of the Lord. And God, it's a good place to find the strength to carry on. And no matter how heavy the load was when you got here, when you start leaving the house of God, it's like, I can make it. I can do it again because he is going to be with me. And so you have been ever on guard against the, the, the negative spirits of our age and the negative spirit of the devil. He wants you to feel hopeless. He wants you to feel helpless. But Paul gave us some wonderful words of encouragement when he mentioned in Philippians 4 and 7, 
Hey, God, Philippians 4 and 7, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. When you think about it, if I can just get my mind on him, the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep my heart and my mind through Jesus Christ. And then he went on to say, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are lovely or whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, just think on these things. If you can just keep thinking on good things and keep thinking on right things, it's amazing what God can do. And so don't lose the battle in your mind because that's where it's really fought. It's what you have to keep your mind fixed on the the peace of God and on the good things that God can do into your life. Even John uh, the Baptist, as great a man as he was, that Jesus said, uh, no man born of a woman was greater than, than John the Baptist. But he had to fight doubts when he got in prison and uh, he was fixing to be beheaded of the Uh, doubts begin to come and so he had to go and get some reassurances and there are times that we find ourselves in similar situations where that circumstances that are beyond our control and situations that we don't understand why they're coming our way and this is what Peter said about those kind of situations in first Peter 4 and 12 beloved Think it not strange concerning the fire trials which is to try you as though some strange things has happened to you. Don't think that you're the only one that's having troubles and trials. Don't think that you're having some strange situation. But really what you need to do is rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's suffering. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. In every situation God has planned and designed that it could bring you into to something fresh and something better and so God has a victory plan for you in every fiery trial every situation and I don't want you to think that well if I just endure today then then the victory coming tomorrow I'm telling you there's some trials and tests depending on the the uh, amount of victory that is wrapped up in that trial and test that it may go for days and it may go for weeks and you may struggle with things but I'm telling you victory is going to come mourning is going to come rejoicing is going to come victory is going to come and so you have to remember that Christian life is a mar- is a marathon race it's not the hundred yard dash but it's the endurance it's he that endureth to the end the same shall be saved and so I'm in this for the long haul I'm not I didn't just get this because I wanted to get a little blessing but I got them to go to the end to finish the race and so there are times you can do nothing but just trust the character of God just have to say God you said that it was going to be for my good I don't see any good coming out of it but I'm just going to trust you anyway because you said all things are working together for the good of them that love the Lord and so I'm just going to believe you and I'm just going to trust the character of God that he will do what he promised he would do and so God gives commands he doesn't give explanations so there are times that we're looking for explanations and God just said no this is what you do he's got you may not understand it you may not figure it out just don't worry about it you just do what is right to do somewhere we have to understand that God knows best in spite of our own uh, frivolous situations and so to follow him you are either crazy or you have to know something if you want to follow the Lord you're either beside yourself as they said Paul was or you have to know something and this is what we know James chapter 1 and verse number 2 my brethren, can it all joy when you fall into divers temptation? Amen. And Lord, why do you want me to can it all joy when I fall into divers temptation? Knowing this, when you know this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. And let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So when I learn how to just accept the ebbs and flow of life and I just go through that knowing this, that this trial that I'm going through, this situation that I'm going through, it's going to work patient and out of that's going to come uh, the perfect work and then out of that's going to come, I'm going to be wanting nothing, that God is going to bring it to good. And so God knows what he's doing. Sometimes we wonder where he's taking us to. Some of you that God's wanting to use your life, he's wanting to put you into situations and opportunities to for his kingdom and you just have to be able to relax and just say God 
I don't know why you would want to use me. I don't know how you could use me, but I'm going to just trust you anyway. And so whatever you want to do, count it all joy. Because he has promised in Corinthians 10 and 13, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above your able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. And so I don't ever have to really worry if I can just understand that, God, you're working all of this out. You're the orchestrator. You're, you're really putting this all together. And sometimes it looks like a, a mixed up puzzle but the truth of the matter is is that when you uh, look at the finished work of Calvary you're going to see that it was well he did a good job he knew what he was doing all the time and so God knows what you can handle he knows where you need to be uh, molded and made and so you have to uh, just uh, hang in there you just have to keep pressing and believing that he's going to make it all work for good and as we look at God's word, we, we see that our God is very faithful. Matter of fact, in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing also that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And basically, what he's saying there is that I just gave you the chapter 11 of Hebrews, which was God's heroes of faith. It tells about all of these heroes of faith. And it said, you can look at their lives and you can see that I was faithful to them. And you have this great cloud of witnesses. And so now if they made it, you can make it. If they endured, you can endure. If they overcame, you can overcome. And so tonight we stand before a God that is more than able to see you through. He didn't get you in this fight for you to lose. He got you in the fight to be a winner. Praise God. And so I appreciate him tonight. And God, while we're standing tonight, because there are some waters that are just meant to go through. And there's some things that you're dealing with today that you just have to understand. God wants me to go through these things. And so our, 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 our promise is this. James 1 and 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And so what this is all about is going to heaven. What this is all about is knowing that if I will endure these things, then I'm going to be able someday to step into heaven. Thank God. There's a world out there that if I... Listen to it. It's going to lead me into a devil's hell. But if I will listen to the word of God, he's going to in bring me into a place where that I can receive a crown of life that fadeth not away. And so God's plan is that you go through the waters and the trials and the temptation. God's plan is that you turn away from sin and that you turn your heart to him. If you're here tonight out our God is really looking for you today and God is reaching for you. He wants you to know that he has paid the price for your sins. He wants you to know that salvation is a free gift. He wants you to know that you don't have to do anything to be saved except surrender your life to him. There's no money that you have to bring. There's no good works that you have to do. All you have to do is repent of your sins and be baptized in his name. And he'll fill you with his wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. And he will deliver you from all the powers of hell that are troubling you and challenging you today it's so beautiful to be able to look over this congregation tonight and be able to see people that's been delivered from drugs and people that's been delivered from alcohol and people that's been delivered from all kind of sin and to know that that same God can deliver whosoever will that he's no respective person all you have to do is repent and call upon his name thank God and he will show up and he will fill you up with his spirit and change your life into something beautiful. Praise God. So while we're singing a chorus tonight, if you'd like to know Jesus Christ, if you'd like to step into his presence tonight, thank God you can just make your way down to an altar because that's where it all begins is at an altar of repentance.